So now let's look at a third and last case, where we're going to assume that now wages um, increase with UI instead of not responding to UI. which is what you would get, for instance, through uh, bargaining. And uh, so here we're going to look at this you know, really standard matching model, so where you have this bargaining going on and a linear production function. I hear horizontal. Labor demand. So once more, let's use our um, labor market diagram to see what's going to happen in that model. Uh, so tightness, y axis, employment, labor force. Tightness is here, employment is here, labor force one, here is a zero. <coughs> so we have labor supply, exactly the same shape as before. We have the labor demand, so here we have the case with our um, linear production function, so that gives us a horizontal labor demand. Maybe something like this. Except that now um, there's a big difference is that the um, wage depends on UI. So that means that the labor demand is going to depend on UI. So we have theta D of UI. Okay. Um, all right. So where is our equilibrium? So the equilibrium is here. Okay. What is employment here? So, uh, unemployment is here in the original equilibrium, employment is here, tightness of course is here, that's a setup. Okay, so now the question again is what happens if uh, we decide to increase UI? All right, so um, labor supply, what's going to happen? Well, we know you increase UI, people have less incentive to search, labor supply shifts in. That's the effect that, you know, the shifts that we've had in all, uh, all previous models. So the labor supply is going to do something like this. So the labor supply with a new UI, and so we have a big shift in labor supply. Something like this. Okay, that's the first thing. And you know, um, if tightness remain constant, that would take us to that point. Yeah. Okay, so if tightness, you know, remain constant, if the labor demand didn't change, we would get to that orange point here. We would get to some level of employment at prime. Um, this original reduction in employment from L to L prime, which also leads to, of course, a comment rate increase in unemployment, that would be caused through the, what we call the moral hazard channel, the fact that people search less when you increase UI and the government can, also the government can control UI, they can't control search efforts or um, there's nothing they can do about it, so here we would have Oops. Oops. 
So here we would have this moral hazard channel that we've been talking about. Okay, so that would, you know, it means that basically effort, effort would fall when UI goes up, and that would lead to an increase in uh, employment. And again, uh, going back to the kind of terminology that we've introduced, that gap here between the two employment level, which is also an increase in unemployment, we would, you know, that would uh, be measured by what we call a microelasticity, epsilon small m. Okay, so that microelasticity captures the increase in unemployment, or if you want the reduction in employment that's caused by the increase in UI when we keep tightness constant.